Hey everybody, Stevie X here, and today I have my first video with regard to content speculation for World of Warships. This speculation comes at a perfect time for it, since the nation branch in question is just being introduced into the game, with its first premium ship making an appearance. Namely, I'm here to talk about the new Pan American branch, and what we see with it today, and what it could possibly hold in the future. It turns out there's actually quite a lot that can be done with this. There are a lot of interesting ships, ranging from numerous cruisers, a couple of aircraft carriers, and even some battleships, and even as I found, a proposal for a Pan American Destroyer tech tree from Tier 1 to Tier 10, which I think I'll discuss in the second part of this little two-part series I'm making. So, with that said, what is this new Pan American branch all about? Well, as the name would suggest, the branch operates in a similar vein as the Pan-Asian branch that we already have in-game, where we have ships from many different countries, in this case from Latin America, and it would mostly feature notable ships from each of those countries. Also similar to the Pan-Asians would be the amount of ships from M's that originated in other countries, and as such are ships that you would likely see in other tech trees, albeit with some differences between them. That's very much the case for the first ship they're introducing in this branch, and it could perhaps hold true for a lot of other ships they introduce for it. So with that said, let's start by looking at the first ship we're getting in this new tech tree, and that is the brand new Tier 7 Premium Cruiser from Argentina, the Nueve de Julio. Now, one thing you may well notice about the Nueve de Julio is that it may look rather familiar. In fact, it looks very much like the Helena that we have at Tier 7 in the U.S. light cruiser line. And that's because, well, it is somewhat related to it. The ship started out in life as the USS Boise, which was a Brooklyn-class light cruiser built for the U.S. Navy beginning in 1936 and commissioned in 1938. She, of course, served in World War II in both theaters, most notably in the Battle of Cape Esperance in the Guadalcanal Campaign, as well as in the invasion of Sicily. When the war was over, Boise and all of her Brooklyn-class sisters were decommissioned, and two were sold for scrap, with the remaining five all going to navies in South America. Two of them, the Brooklyn and the Nashville, were sold to the Chilean Navy and were renamed the O'Higgins and the Capitan Pratt, respectively. The Philadelphia was sold to the Brazilian Navy and was renamed the Barroso, and the remaining two, the Boise and the Phoenix, no, not that one, that one, were sold to the Argentine Navy and were renamed the Nueve de Julio and the Diecisiete de Octubre, respectively, though the latter will be renamed the General Belgrano later on. In the case of these two ships, the General Belgrano is probably the more famous of the two, though for the wrong reasons, perhaps. And given the nature of those reasons, it's understandable to a point why the Nueve de Julio was chosen instead, though the Nueve de Julio is far from free from controversy. The only notable service that the Nueve de Julio was involved in in Argentina was taking part in the 1955 revolution when the Argentine military and several political parties rebelled against President Juan Perón, and the Nueve de Julio performed coastal bombardment on loyalist positions. And she may have collided with her sister ship once a bit after that. So, yeah. Whoopsie! After that, the ship was withdrawn from service in 1971 and was mostly known for being used as a prison ship before she was scrapped in 1979, and that's where the big controversy lies with the Nueva de Julio. In fact, Rita Gamer has actually started a petition questioning why Wargaming would want to put that in. So, why would this be choos chosen and not the General Belgrano, you may ask? Well, the General Belgrano is also a really controversial ship. The Belgrano actually participated in the Falklands War against the UK in 1982, and the nature of her sinking is still likely a hot-button topic, especially for the Argentines in the room. Here's the skinny. When the Falklands War began, the British government declared a maritime exclusion zone around the Falkland Islands, and that any Argentine ship that entered the area was subject to being sunk by British ships or aircraft. On May 2, 1982, the General Belgrano would be torpedoed and sunk by the British submarine HMS Conqueror. No, not that Conqueror. That one. Taking 323 of the 1,095 crew and civilians on board down with her. However, since the sinking took place outside the declared exclusion zone and conflicting reports from both Argentine and British sources, the sinking remains a source of controversy, especially in Argentina. So I can understand to a point why they chose to have the Nueva de Julio instead rather than the Belgrano, though it is sort of a questionable choice in any case. So with the Nueva de Julio explained, let's have a look and see what other ships we could see in-game. Let's continue with the cruisers that we could possibly see. I've already mentioned the Nueva de Julio's sisters that served in the Brazilian and Chilean navies, but there are many more. Let's continue with Argentina, since we seem to have that ball rolling already. 
of which there are a few notable ones that could serve well as premiums. First, I found the Almirante Brown class heavy cruisers. Built in Italy, two were completed, Almirante Brown and 25 de Mayo. They were largely based on the Italian Trento class heavy cruisers, though they didn't carry quite as much firepower compared to the Trentos. Still, these ships are quite an interesting case. Main armament would be three dual turrets mounting 190mm guns. Secondaries, six dual 102mm guns, which would likely be dual purpose to bolster the AA suite. And regular AA would be six Vickers 40mm pom-pom two-pounders. And she would also mount a total of six 533mm torpedo tubes. Her armor leaves a lot of aspects to be desired, with 71mm of side armor, 25 on the deck, and only 51mm on the turrets. So, it's not the toughest thing in the world. Top speed? 32 knots. Despite the lackluster armor, it seems pretty interesting. I'd like to see her as a tier 5, maybe tier 6, and given her, her appearance, I'd say she will play pretty similar to ships like the Furutaka and the Alba at those tiers. The second interesting one for Argentina was a ship called the ARA La Argentina, a light cruiser that I would likely see at tier 6 or so. She was largely based on the British Arethusa class light cruisers, which are in turn quite similar to the Leander that we have at tier 6 in the British cruiser line. However, don't get me wrong, this ship is far from a Leander clone. Main armament were three triple turrets of 152mm guns, fairly similar to ships like the Nuremberg, the De Grasse, and the Le Galissonaire. Secondaries will be four single 102 mils, again likely dual purpose, AA, six single 40 mil pom-poms, and again she'd have six torpedo tubes. Armor, she's pretty much similar to the British light cruisers, only 76 millimeters of belt being the most available, so again, kind of a glass cannon. Top speed, 30 knots. In my view, both of these ships could be quite interesting to see in-game. They could be very unique and present some challenges to the player, so I'd see them being welcome additions. So with that said, let's look at the country which for a while in the early 20th century and late 19th century as well in particular, was Argentina's main regional territorial rival. You thought I was going to say Brazil, didn't you? Nope, it's Chile. Again, I mentioned the Brooklyn-class ships that went to Chile after World War II, the O'Higgins and the Capitan Prat. But there are a few other notable ones out there. One of which I found was an old armored cruiser named the O'Higgins, named after one of the founding fathers of Chile. The ship was built in Britain in 1898 and served until 1933. Quite impressive. She had a wide variety of guns on board as well. Main armament were four 203mm guns as well as eight 152mm, which I could see working as dual primary weapons. Secondaries would be four 120mm guns, 10 12 pounder 76mm, 10 57mm Hotchkiss guns, and two machine guns. Also, she had three torpedo tubes. Belt armor, very strong for a cruiser of her age, at 178 millimeters, so this is a tough old bird of a ship. Top speed, pretty slow, 21.6 knots. All things considered, this seems like a pretty interesting one, and I see her play kind of a similar vein to ships like the St. Louis or the Bogatier, likely at tier 3 or 4 by my estimate. Another interesting Chilean cruiser is a ship that could well appear in another tech tree we might get down the line. If we ever were to get a Swedish tech tree in World of Warships, which some could argue that there is a case to be made for one, especially destroyers, or a pan-European tree, this ship could very well appear there if we don't see it in this form. In Chile, the ship was named the Almirante La Torre, though she was originally the Swedish Trekornor class light cruiser Jota Leon, and I'm sorry if I'm butchering that name. She was sold to the Chilean Navy in 1971 after being removed from service and served in Chile until 1984. I personally really like what I see with this ship. It seems rather unique. Main armament were seven 152mm guns, one triple turret 4 and two dual turrets aft, no secondaries but plenty of AA, 20 40mm Bofors and 7 25mm. Carriers beware of this one. Complementing it, six torpedo tubes. Once again, the light cruiser trend continues in having little armor to speak of, with only 70mm of belt armor and 30mm on the deck. Top speed, 33 knots. Under whatever flag I think it would appear in, I think this ship could be pretty interesting. I see her likely at tier 7, maybe tier 8, especially since given the age of this ship, it could well be that it has very good DPM and a good reload time to boost the ship's firepower compared to the other cruisers that we might see at those tiers. Now then, let's have a look at Chile and Argentina's big neighbor to the north, Brazil. 
Again, the Brazilian Navy received a pair of light cruisers from the U.S. Navy after World War II. The Brooklyn-class Barroso, formerly the USS Philadelphia, and the former St. Louis-class USS St. Louis. No, not that St. Louis, that St. Louis, which was renamed the Tamandare, which again could be possible additions with differences compared to the Nueva de Julio. Other than that, there's one other class of cruisers of note for the Brazilians that I found, the Bahia class, a pair of light scout cruisers built in Britain in 1909 and largely based on the Royal Navy's Adventure class scout cruisers. Both ships, the Bahia and the Rio Grande do Sol, participated in both world wars and finally ended their careers in the mid to late 40s. And again, these ships are quite an interesting case. Main armament were 10 120mm guns, secondaries would be 6 47mm 3 pounder Hotchkiss guns, and she would have two torpedo tubes. Armor, pretty much destroyer level. She can be penned by pretty much everything. Top speed, 26.5 knots. Again, a pretty good looking ship that I can see as a tier 3 or tier 4 quite well. So aside from those three countries, what else is there for cruisers? Well, there is another one that I found that hosted two other very interesting classes of cruisers that could work in game. And that country would be Peru. Both of these ships I would see mid to high tier, and again they would follow a light cruiser pattern. The first would be a pair of former Royal Navy Crown Colony class light cruisers, the Coronel Bolognesi, formerly the HMS Ceylon, and the Almirante Grau, formerly the HMS Newfoundland, though the latter was renamed the Capitan Quiones in 1973. Both ships were sold to Peru and served from the early 60s to the late 70s and early 80s. The main difference you would definitely notice between this and the Fiji, the Crown Colony class that we have at Tier 7 in the British cruiser line, is the lack of a second rear gun turret. Both of them had one of the rear turrets removed, so that means they would have three triple turrets of 152mm guns, four 120mm, four 40mm pom-poms, 20 20mm Ehrlichens, and two torpedo tubes. Armor is pretty much the same as the Fiji, which makes sense since it's the Crown Colony class and they're the same class of ship. Top speed, 33 knots. I can say, with a reload boost on these guns, this ship could still work at Tier 7, all other things being equal compared to the Fiji anyway. But it would be interesting to see that if they implemented it in the game and how they could make it work. The other very interesting class were a pair of former Royal Netherlands Navy De Zeven Provincian class light cruisers. Originally named the De Zeven Provincian and the De Reuter, they were sold to the Peruvian Navy in the mid-70s and were renamed as the Aguirre and the Almirante Grau respectively, and they both continued to serve into the 21st century. In fact, the Almirante Grau holds the distinction of being the last all-gun cruiser to serve in any navy in the world when she was finally decommissioned last year in 2017. Isn't that impressive? This ship itself is also quite an interesting case. Main armament would be four twin turrets of 155mm Bofors made guns with a real world reload time of 6 seconds. AA would be 857mm guns, 840mm single Bofors guns, and again, being a light cruiser, we'd have pretty thin armor at around 76mm on the belt. Top speed, 32 knots. In a similar vein to the aforementioned Almirante La Torre, which used to be a Swedish ship, I can see this one being featured here or in a possible Dutch tech tree, which some of the community have debated the feasibility of such a thing, or a general pan-European branch. Tiering? Eh, probably tier 6, maybe tier 7. If the DPM was a bit better, I'd rate it a bit higher, but, um, eh, but with a real-world DPM like that, it could well be suited for a 6 or 7 slot. But in whatever form it appears in, I think this ship could be very interesting. So with that whole business of cruisers squared away, let's have a look at a very interesting topic and probably the most famous thing when it comes to South American naval history. The South American Dreadnought Race. Oh yeah, I'm talking Pan American battleships. The big three when it came to South American navies, Argentina, Brazil, and Chile, sought to acquire battleships for their navies for quite a while at the turn of the century. But with the advent of the dreadnought type of battleships, all previous ideas were scrapped as the demand for dreadnoughts began to grow among their governments. Brazil began the trend, seeking to improve their naval capabilities and experiencing an enormous rubber boom in the 1900s and early 10s, growing their economy. In fact, the Brazilians became the third country in the world, only behind Britain and the United States, to get dreadnought battleships. So yeah, they even beat the Germans, French, Russians, and Japanese to the punch. 
That class of ship that began the trend was the British-built Minas Gerdes class, one of the most powerful warships in the world by the time they were delivered to Brazil in 1910, and the starting point for the Dreadnought Arms Race. Two ships of the class were built, Minas Gerdes and Sao Paulo, and they had very long careers serving in both world wars, with Sao Paulo being decommissioned in 1947 and the Minas Gerdes being decommissioned in 1952. So from a historical standpoint, these ships are already very interesting. And the ship itself, also quite an interesting case. Main armament would be 12 305 millimeter guns, 12 inches, two turrets fore, two aft, and a wing turret on each side, making for a 10 gun potential broadside, similar to ships like the Kaiser or the Corbet. Secondaries, 22 105 millimeter guns, 18 47 mil three pounders, and eight one pounders. Main belt armor would be around 230 millimeters at its thickest, fairly decent, though not outstanding, and a top deck armor of 51 millimeters. Top speed, slow, 21 knots, similar to US battleships. Overall, for a ship at tier 4, this is a very interesting one that I firmly believe deserves a place in game for historical reasons alone, let alone its, its gameplay potential. A few years later, Brazil also put in an order for another dreadnought to counter battleships built for Argentina and Chile, which in turn were built to counter the Minas Gerais class. <laughs> Funny how that works. This single ship was named the Rio de Janeiro and was launched in 1913, though with an economic slowdown in the country and with improving relations with Argentina, she was sold to the Ottoman Empire after she was built and was renamed the Sultan Osman I. She was then seized by the British at the beginning of World War I and she sailed in the British Grand Fleet as HMS Agincourt. Again, in whatever form she would appear in, Brazilian, Ottoman, which could possibly work as pan-European, maybe? question mark or even british this is a very interesting battleship main armament are you ready for it 14 305 millimeter guns yep 14 and seven dual mounts secondaries 20 152 millimeter guns 1076 mils and three torpedo tubes below the waterline which given the fact that they don't normally do those would probably not be modeled but i wouldn't put it past them Armor, 229 millimeters on the belt, 64 millimeters on the decks, and up to 305 on the conning tower and turrets. Top speed, 22 knots. Needless to say, this is a very unique design of battleship. Where would she be? Tier 5 seems most likely, though it could possibly work at Tier 6 if you're pushing it. Maybe. It depends on a lot of factors going in its favor, but I'd say Tier 5 is probably the most likely. Brazil also had an idea on the drawing board for another battleship called the Riacholo, though it was abandoned shortly in its design phase, with numerous ideas being proposed for it, with designs even mounting 381 or 406 millimeter guns. If one of these designs were to be incorporated, they'd likely be mid to high tier, but therein lies a question. Would they use them? Wargaming is of course no stranger to blueprint ships as we all know, but it's really a question of if the demand is there and if the blueprints are available to them. But with that said, let's look at the two big pl other big players in South America's dreadnought race, Argentina and Chile. The first to respond to the call to countering the new ships from Brazil was Argentina's Rivadavia class battleships. Two were built named Rivadavia and Moreno, named after important Argentine historical figures. Built in the United States, they bore a lot of similarities in terms of weaponry in particular to what we see on ships like the Wyoming class built for the U.S. Navy. Main armament were six dual turrets of 305mm guns, so 12 inches again. Secondaries would be 12 152mm guns, 16 102 mils, as well as two below waterline torpedo tubes. So again, questionable if they put that in. Armor follows more of the U.S. Navy's all-or-nothing armor scheme, with up to 300 millimeters of belt armor, as well as on the conning tower and turrets. Top speed, 22.5 knots. So this one, again, would be pretty good at Tier 4, in my view, sharing a lot of playstyle similarities to ships like the Wyoming and the Arkansas Beta, though with a few minor differences that could make it interesting. Finally, though, we come to Chile, which responded with the British-built Almirante La Torre-class battleships. Two were ordered, Almirante La Torre and Almirante Cochrane. However, when World War I came around while the ships were under construction, the Royal Navy purchased them and renamed them. 
the Latore became the HMS Canada and was completed as a battleship which served in the Grand Fleet fighting at the Battle of Jutland in 1916, and the Cochrane was converted into one of Britain's first aircraft carriers, HMS Eagle. After the war was over, the HMS Canada was sold back to Chile and was renamed the Almirante La Torre and served with the Chilean Navy until 1959, so she had quite a long career, albeit without much glory in fighting after the First World War. So looking at the ship herself, main armament worth 10 356mm guns and 5 dual turrets, very similar to the US Navy's New York class. Secondaries were 16 152 mils, 2 76 mils for AA, with 47mm 3-pounder Hotchkiss guns, and 4 submerged 533mm torpedo tubes, which again I question if they put them in. Armor, 230mm at most on the belt, 102mm on the deck, 280 on the conning tower, and 250 on the turrets. Top speed, 22.75 knots. Another very intriguing and unique design that I see working at tier 5 very, very well. Finally, as a small note here, before I move on to the destroyers in my next video, there is the topic of aircraft carriers, of which there are three of note from Brazil and Argentina. Both examples were post-war carriers, so I'm a bit hesitant as to if they're going to be featured, though I don't think it's entirely unquestionable, especially if the carrier rework comes around and they're able to make it work. In the case of Argentina, there are two aircraft carriers that they operated. Both of them were former Royal Navy Colossus-class carriers. The first, the HMS Warrior, which also served in the Royal Canadian Navy as the HMCS Warrior, was sold to Argentina in 1958 and was renamed the ARA Independencia, and the HMS Venerable, which was then in the Royal Netherlands Navy as the HNLMS Carol Dorman, was sold in 1968 to Argentina and was renamed 25 de Mayo. Independencia had a very brief and quiet career in Argentina, not really doing much, and she was scrapped in 1971. But the 25 de Mayo served into the 1990s and even took part in the Falklands War as an air support role before she was scrapped in 1997. These ships historically had a hangar capacity of 48 aircraft, but in reality they were fairly modern planes on board, so the tiering would largely be based on what kind of planes they mount. So I could see anywhere from tier 6 to tier 8, depending on their complement. If someone wants to speculate on what kind of aircraft we could see on these ships if they ever implement them, feel free to do so. Also, there was Brazil's aircraft carrier, the Sao Paulo. The Sao Paulo was originally the French Clemenceau-class carrier Foch. No, not that Foch. That Foch. Launched in 1960 and sold to Brazil in 2000. So, yeah, the age of the ship really leaves as a big question mark as to whether she'd ever be featured, as it could be reasonably seen as too modern for implementation. She was able to carry 39 aircrafts, and so if she were to compete more closely with ships that we have to see in real, that we see in real life, she'd need to have major high-tier aircraft. So if this ship can or cannot be implemented, feel free to debate it. I'm not one to say one way or the other. And with that said, do stay tuned for the next video as I go over the proposal for a Pan American Destroyer branch, as well as a general overview of destroyers from Latin American countries. There's a lot of cool stuff that I've found there on top of the cool things I've seen here. So the speculation will be a lot of fun, I think. With that said, thank you so much for watching. Feel free to discuss the topic, hopefully in a sensible manner in the comments below, and I'll try to read them if you do. Do stay tuned, and thank you for watching. Keep on sailing, my friends.